Even in the body of Christ, there's a paradigm shift. I mean, I was listening yesterday for a few minutes for a minister who's, who ministers and who is deeply Pentecostal, um, steeped in traditions of men. And as I heard him preach some things, I went, wow, he's trying to bring his people out of some of that. I mean, I came out of that. What he was trying to bring them out of, I came out a long time ago. But that's okay in this journey is we are moving and we're having a paradigm shift. And even in my finished work understanding that I understood 10 years ago, God is still, Holy Spirit, my teacher who teaches me all truth, is still filtering and is still bringing me out of some erroneous teaching and some erroneous understanding. I believe Jesus did, excuse me, did come and he finished the work of the Father. What I am after is the clearness and the clear understanding of what Jesus meant when he came to finish the work of the Father. And I believe we, have been, we are being revealed or it's being unveiled to us the truth about Jesus and his work in death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. The last time I was here, we looked at John 17, verse 30 through 20, and we really don't have to go there, but those of you at home or, or out there want to look it up, that's fine. But we looked at Jesus began to talk about his desire for his disciples, those who were following him, and those that would come after him. And basically what he began to pray there, he began to pray, keep them from, from the evil, the hurtful effects or the influence of this present order of, or this present world, this natural order. Um, and in verse 17, he began to talk to the Father and say, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. So what he was doing was asking Father, sanctify them. Now, the old time Pentecostals taught us that we... Um, we are come, born again, we're sanctified, and we're filled with the Holy Ghost, and they call them definite works of grace. It is a working of grace in us and out of us. And we talked a little bit about sanctification simply being where we allow God to begin to change our understanding. Because sanctification has to do with allowing God to change your thinking. Jesus came re preaching repentance, change your thinking. And he's praying, God, sanctify them, set them apart. How does he, does he mean when he says, Father, set them apart? Well, really, he's praying, set them apart from this present order, this present world. He's talking about set them apart in their awareness, set them apart in their understanding. And how is that going to be? The revelation of the truth. And that's what we're after is for an unveiling of truth. And as truth is being unveiled, we begin to experience resurrection. The re resurrection is being who Jesus resurrected us to be. And we're going to talk about some of that today. But what sanctification is, I believe, and more and more I'm seeing is separating from the natural to the truth of the spiritual, separating me from living life and seeing life out of the, the um, double vision of the natural and moving me spiritually to see through the single eye of the spirit the life that I am and the, the life that I share with my father. So Jesus came in his day to transition the people in their understanding, to bring them into truth. And we talked last time about Jesus. And we talked about the um, tabernacle. And we talked about it, talk about the fact that it represents or gives us a picture of, of Jesus coming to us. That Jesus came from a most holy place, from the realm of spirit. And he came, he comes out to where we are here in this natural or this outer court being enslaved to a natural and, and outward realm. And that's what Jesus came in his day. He dealt with the Jewish people who were caught up in a religious system of works and labor, things that they needed to do, things in the natural they needed to do to get God to accept him. But 
what he does if we will hear him, if we'll even look at his work. His death, His burial, and His resurrection. And we allow Holy Spirit to bring that paradigm shift in our understanding of the finished work of Christ. Of what His death meant for us. What His burial meant for us. What His resurrection meant for us. We allow Holy Spirit. What begins to happen, and you're going to get to see this more and more, and I will stay on this teaching for several few times that I'm up here. But what we begin to see is we move from an outer court understanding and experience, we move into an inner court and of understanding and experience, and we move into a most holy place experience. What does that mean? It simply means, remember, there are parallel truths. When we talk about Egypt, wilderness, and land of promise, they're all parallel here. We see some of the same central truths in here. So, as we... Study And as we allow Holy Spirit, our teacher, to teach us of the work of Christ, we move from being enslaved to just seeing things outwardly and living life outwardly. Here's this rim here is where God's up yonder and I'm down here. That's that kind of thinking. I'm separated from God. That's the bondage we're in. That's the bondage of humanity. Is they see God up yonder and they see themselves here. And they got to figure out a way how to get God from up there to come here. That's what the Jewish religion was all about. What works we do to get God to come from up yonder to come here? The wilderness is a place of confusion. Manna means what is it? Remember in the wilderness, there's a whole lot of doubt and complaining. They are back and forth, back and forth. One day they got faith, and another day they don't have a place. They're focused on a natural thing leading them. Let me say this. In the wilderness, their focus was, they had to have something in the natural to lead them. Now, I've dealt with people, and I continue to deal with people. They got to have something spoken in the natural, I got to have a prof. Don't get me wrong here. Prophecy is good because there's people that are stuck in the wilderness. They need a prophetic word. All right? They're stuck in the wilderness in their, their understanding and their experience. They need a prophetic word. They need a gift of the Spirit. Okay? I'm not against that. But what I'm saying is God wants us to move out of this thing having to live life focused on the natural <coughs> Excuse me. Because in this, their supply and source was something out, outwardly. Here I go with the dry throat again. I'm still on now. I'm back on. Okay, I turned it off because oh, you don't need to hear all the coughing and carrying on. Okay. Back to where we are, were. In this paradigm shift that we're going through in our understanding, we come and identify, here we're identifying with our physical self, here in this wilderness, we're identifying with physical self and Holy Spirit. We, we get introduced to Holy Spirit and the workings of the Holy Spirit. That's Pentecost. That, again, all of this lines up with the feast. That's Pentecost. 
a lot of people are stuck here and not willing to move forward. They're not willing to move into a place, the land of promise, where they've never been before. But you know, they were willing to move here, but they're not willing to move here. But then there is a people in the day in which we live who are ready to move out of here, into here, but they're ready to move in to the land of promise experience. The land of promise experience means living out of spirit, being sourced, knowing you are sourced out of spirit, hearing his voice, going forward and looking inward. Because here you realize that God's not way up yonder, but he's one with me. And let me say this, and I'm going to pronounce this, and we're going to get into this. But you begin to identify as spirit. A whole lot of talking today about identity, even in the natural world. I identify as. I identify as straight. I identify as homosexual. I identify I'm a transgender. Okay, there's a whole lot of identification. I'm not worried about any of that stuff. My concern for humanity is that they identify as spirit. So it's moving into identifying as spirit. And this is what Jesus came to do. All of this work was to transition humanity from here, from living their life solely based on their physical self and looking at themselves, to moving on to identifying the reality of who they really are, which is spirit. That's the part of you, let me, if I just say it this way, that's the part of you that is created in the image and the likeness of God. And as your spirit, as being, not I shouldn't say your spirit, but as being spirit, and see, that's the paradigm shift that needs to come, that we stop saying, that my spirit's got to come to me. You are spirit. And your spirit lives in a physical body that manifests the life of God. Every time you take a breath, you're manifesting the life of God. Now, let's move on because I'm getting bogged down and I, I want to get to where I was at or where I want to go. Let's go to John 8, verse 12. Again now, still declaring that Jesus came to show us how to move from identity of just this physical man to an identity as I am spirit. But Judy, I look at you and I see a physical woman. That's the conduit through which you see who I really am, which is spirit. Does that make sense? All right. Here's Jesus in John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying... I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, I want to deal with this where Jesus says, I am the light of the world. When he uses that term light, that's the, a Greek word phos, P-H-O-S. It means to shine or make manifest. I am the light. I'm going to make something manifest. That word, world is cosmos, the present order, including the inhabitants, the physical inhabitants. They shall, if they will follow me, they shall not walk in darkness. Now, Jesus is talking here about the awareness of people. He's talk, not talking about something physical here. He's talking something about awareness. And he says, I'm the light. I'm the manifestation. I am the one that's going to be the light to the world. And what is this light that I am, he said. He says, because you will follow me. What do you mean follow me? You'll begin to see and understand and think like I think. See, uh, sometimes people say, I follow this person's ideas. I follow this person's teaching and they won't listen to anybody else. What they're saying is, I listen to what they're saying in their ideas and I listen to their understanding. 
He said, they shall not walk in darkness. Where is the darkness? This is the darkness. I, I, and, I, and, and I'm declaring some things by the Spirit. And you, need, and you have to hear it by the Spirit. But this is the darkness. To live your life as a mere physical human being, and that's all that you see that you are, you are walking in darkness. But to bring you out of that, Jesus comes to bring you out of that darkness by being the light, bringing you through this wilderness place in your thinking, bringing you through this wilderness place in your awareness because in that place you want to do it like you've always done you're looking for something physical and natural but then on another hand when you thought life gets tough and 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 i'm a borrow a word of some for someone and it's not a polite word but i'm just gonna say it, and life and this natural life throws crap at you you want god to show up and deal with it for you when it might be, let me just put it this way, and it might be that God wants you to learn how to deal with that crap yourself. Take responsibility to handle it yourself. How do you do it? By faith. If the children of Israel, when crap, the serpents began to bite them, God gave them something to look up to. They had a responsibility to look to what represented the work of Christ on the cross. And you need to work, move from focusing on the natural, focusing then on something spiritual that took place in the work of Christ. See, this is about changing your awareness. Another way I'm going to say it, change your thinking. Change your understanding. Jesus came to change the understanding of humanity. That's why I tell you, he was our prototype. He was the one not only that taught, and sh and taught about who we really are, he demonstrated in spirit and power, who we are. I'm telling you, God is challenging me to move in. God, I don't know about you in this house. Those that are listening to us by Facebook, you may not understand what we're saying. But in this house, we know God is challenging us to move in across this Jordan, to move into something we've never experienced before. I'm no longer happy to stay here. I want to move in. I'm no longer ha happy having to go run and get a work of the Spirit from somebody else. I'm no longer happy having to run and have somebody that can walk and, and manifest the gifts of the Spirit to say something. I want to live, I want to come in here, and I want to live out of this land of promise of living out of who I really am. See, my, our identity has to change. We have to change our identity from who we are physically and who I manifest naturally, and I have to move into identifying a spirit that I am one with him. Because that's the me that's been created in the image and the likeness of God. I am spirit. And as spirit that is in union with him, in this union with him there is no separation, and it's his life that works in and through me. All right, and I've gotten off, I got off, said a little bit more than I intended, but it's fine, it, it flows. He said, he shall have, that phrase shall have is the word, this blew me out the water. Shall have is the Greek word echo. It means to hold, possess, or own. To hold oneself or find oneself. Now, that jumped off the page at me. You know, we think about it. It spoke to me. It spoke to me. So, shall have simply means I'm going to go find my who I really am. I'm going to go find myself. 
I thought I had myself all figured out here, walking this natural woman that I am. Then I thought I found myself here. I started finding out some things about myself. But then comes this revelation of who I really am. I'm not a physical person having a physical natural experience. I am a spirit that is coming forth out of this physical body being seen. Just like Jesus was all spirit, all God. And he manifested who he was. That's why he would tell them. You don't believe what I'm saying to you. Believe me for the work's sakes. The works that I'm doing. What I'm manifesting. He shall have the light of life. This word light means false to make manifest. And we're going to make manifest. And then I got to this word life, which is zoe. Let's talk about in the New Testament, there are three Greek words for life. So just when you see life in the New Testament doesn't mean it all means zoe. Okay? There is bios, which is basically the physical, the natural. There are scriptures there, and I'll give you one scripture, Luke 8 and 14. Well, let's jump there real quick. My time has run so fast. And that which, talking about the seed... That which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches of this life. That word life there simply means the life of the physical, of the natural. And so what he's saying is you get a word from God, but you let this natural choke it out. You get overwhelmed by what's going on. The doctor tells you you got cancer. And you let that idea of cancer and your experiences with people of what cancer does to people, you let it choke out the word that you had received about you are healthy and whole in God. Then there's the word suke. The word suke in many times it, it used life as life means is suke in the New Testament. It means mind, emotions, wills, that which has been formed by our experiences, our soul life. So sometimes the life in the scriptures, and if we go there to Matthew 16, 25, and Matthew 16, 25 is the word suke, when you see the word life there. And whosoever will save his life shall lose it. That is, who shall save his life shall lose it. That just doesn't make sense, does it? I always wondered about that scripture. So whosoever shall save his suke shall lose it. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, there's some things in your suke, in your mind, will, and emotions you need to lose so your suke can take on the truth. That's sanctification. That is Sanctify them by thy word. Thy word is truth. Hearing him, letting the word sanctify this little girl up here. So that this little girl up here starts agreeing with, with her husband, which is spirit. They marry. They become the same, of the same perspective, the same mindset, the same understanding. And then the Zoe, which is John 10, 10. We'll go there real quick. And I know I'm going to run over and it's going to be fine because I'm going to put this out here because I know the Lord wants it out. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I'm not talking about a spiritual being. Now, this is a, a parable that's being spoken here. I'm talking about a thief coming in and stealing. I am come that they might have what? Life. This word life here is the word zoe. It means eternal life of God. It means the divine life of God. It means the living out of... See, the life of God flows out of spirit. The life of God doesn't flow out of your natural body. Well, I shouldn't say it isn't produced. It will flow out of you, but it is, does not produce the life of God. Your suke cannot produce the life of God, but it can assist and help you when your suke gets straightened out up here. 
it can assist and help you in living out the life of God. Let me give you an example. Let me just say this. In this physical body that I inhabit, because I'm spirit and I inhabit this physical body, there are times symptoms show up. And I'll just give you an example. For three weeks, I've had a symptom showed up in my body. And I will be honest with you. I found myself thinking about it from this perspective. What can I do in the natural to get rid of it? What can I do in the natural? And I'd used some, I did some natural things, and it helped a little bit. But one morning I got up, and the Lord had begun talking to me. You have forgotten who you really are. You have forgotten who you are. And I began to declare over this body, I am the health of the Lord. I am healthy and I am whole. Because what's true of me in spirit, that my spirit is healthy and whole because I'm in union with him, is true of this body. Because it's healthy and whole because not only is my, I'm, I am spirit, which is one with God, but spirit impacts this physical man. You need to understand, moving to here will make a world of difference in your experience. The next day I had to get up and I had to go to Charleston. And I was having pain, and I'm going, oh, help me, Lord. But when I got up that morning, and I got in the car, the severity of the pain had left. I made that trip always for two, almost three weeks before, when I would try to get in the car and I'd drive, I'd have that pain. But I made that trip that day. And since that day, Healing and health and wholeness has come to this body. Um, because why? I chose to identify as who I am. I'm still transitioning. I'm still coming across this Jordan, moving into the experience of the reality of who I am. That's what living in the promised land is about. Living in the promised land is a picture of identifying as who you really are with Father, Spirit. Getting your, see, all of this has to do with identification too. Is you identifying with who you really are. We get here and we're, we're back and forth in identification. But when we get here, there's a big paradigm shift that happens. See, I was telling Pastor early, in my days of the beginning of the finished work of Jesus, there has come a paradigm shift in my understanding of the finished work of Jesus. And there were some errors in my thinking that was nothing more than mixture. And I've had to allow... Holy Spirit, my spirit, to begin to teach me and talk to me about what Jesus meant when he talked about the finished work. He came to finish the work of the Father. I'm still on that journey. Jesus came to give us a paradigm shift, to bring us in an awareness of the truth of who we really are. John 17, verse 16. Jesus again, talking to Father, says, talking about his followers, those that follow me. Are you a follower of Jesus? I am. But I didn't live during the day that the physical man Jesus walked, but I do have a record of some things he said and he taught. And I am a follower of the literal, physical Jesus. What do you mean, Judy, you're a follower? I study him. I want to understand him. I want to know why he did what he did. And can I just tell you, I want to know why he was able to lay his hands on the sick and they recovered. I want to know why he could speak to people and all kinds of things would begin to change. The working of miracles, we call them. I want to know why. And I think I know why. It's this scripture here we're looking at. They are not of the world. They're not of this present order. They're not of all of this natural going on. 
He says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Jesus declared he was not of the cosmos, the natural order. What did he mean by that? I'm spirit. I'm here a physical man. But he began to declare, I am spirit. There are other things Jesus said, I am. He says, I am the bread of life. That phrase, I am, if you look it up, means I exist. I exist, not of the world. That is my existence, the reality of who I am as spirit, just like my daddy, is not of this physical realm. You know, I've come and I manifest the reality of it. And that's what Jesus did. He manifested the reality of who he was as spirit. He was not concerned about who he was as a physical man. He was concerned about that people saw a manifestation of who he was as spirit. He was spirit that lived in a body. He was God. The scripture says God made flesh. That's why I tell y'all, you're the only God some people are going to experience. What do you mean, Judy? You're the only spirit that's flowing out of the realm of spirit that they're going to experience. Let's go to seventeen sixteen. Go back to fifteen. There's another scripture in there I want to pull. No, go 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 again to fifteen. Go sixteen, seventeen. Sanctify them, set them apart through thy truth, thy word is truth. Set them apart. Set them apart from what? Set them apart from all this natural stuff. Set them apart from all this natural stuff in their thinking. I have not moved away because I'm a big teacher of it's all about your awareness. Because the, the truth is, there's already truth. Before they left Egypt, it was true that the promised land was theirs. That there was a provision for them. And it is true that I have everything that I have need of. See, some people are going looking for something to happen. And health and wholeness is already true of you. Where does it come from? Out of spirit, your union with the Father. It flows from the inside. When I say the inside, it flows from something that you can't see with the natural eye. It's not by natural observation. You can see the manifestation of it, but you can't see spirit. Remember when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus and he talked to him about spirit? And he, talked, he basically told him, he said, spirit, you know, you can't see it, but you can see the effects of it. See, my outward physical person is a manifestation of the effects of how much spirit that I'm allowing to live out of. My experience in life is a result of me allowing myself, suke, to live out of spirit. Yes, we attain some things by our own efforts, but those are not lasting. It's a temporal, the scriptures tell us. They're temporary. But what remains is that which flows out of God, that which flows out of spirit. Sanctify them or set them apart in their understanding. Through truth, thy word is truth. Next verse. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. 19. And for their sake I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through the, their word, that they all may be as one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. This is about this union. He's talking about that they, 
is it true that are we in union with the Father? Yes. But what he's talking about here, in their awareness, he's talking, he's saying that they come to the awareness of their union with us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Next verse. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. In them, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Next verse. Father, I will that also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Now, we wasn't that they be with me where I am, and we're talking, oh, he wants us to go to heaven where he's at. No. When he says that those that you've given, they be with me where I am. He's talking about that they be with me where I am in my understanding, in my knowing. This is about awareness. That they may behold my glory. And thou hast, that thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Next verse. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee. This is Jesus. The world, this present order, hath not. They have not known you, God. Oh, but they were doing all this religious stuff. They were doing works, but they didn't know God. And that's the biggest problem in Christianity today. We're busy doing a lot of religious junk, and we don't know who our Father really is. And we do all this stuff saying, I'm doing it for God, I'm doing it for God. When God never wanted you to do it, He just wanted you to get to know Him. But I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Next verse. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. And I think that's... That's the last one, okay? Now, go to John's... Uh, we did that, okay. I think I've covered it. I think I can finish. Sum it up. In this journey... We are moving from living life based totally on the physical, natural realm. We're moving from living life based upon what I can do and what I can attain and what I can be. And moving, and we've been moving through the wilderness. We've had some doubt and complaining. Come on, let's be real. We've had some doubt sometimes. And when we got that doubt, what did we do? We complained. Guess what? I catch myself now wanting to stay here. And I have to go to Father, and he begins to talk to me and instruct me. How does he do that? In spirit, I begin to hear his voice. I begin to hear his voice. And I move from being focused on wanting to see something happen in the natural to declare God is real. And I move from thinking my source is something out there. And I move as I hear him, as I come in here. Joshua told him, come in here. As I begin to hear his voice within, I move in to going forward, looking inward and identifying as spirit and realizing who I am as spirit is union with the Father. I know all things. I hear all things. And as I come into my identity as spirit and as one with Father, I can be like Jesus and say, I am. I exist. I am health. And I'm not going to be, I am health. I am wholeness. I am love. I am PC. I begin to see myself as I exist as spirit. I am a success. I'm not a success going to happen. I already am a success. I like what Dean says. I am a winner. Not going to win. I am a winner. 
I am everything that God says. Well, Judy, I don't see it manifest. Hold on, baby. You're going to open your natural eyes and see a manifestation of the life of God coming out of this woman. As long as I declare who I am in Him. Well, let me just go on and throw something out and give you something to chew on. We talk about the anointed one within us. Christ in me. That's what the Christ, I'm in your way, you're trying to copy notes. Christ in me. That word Christ, Christos, means anointed. The anointed one in me. Who is the anointed one in me? Let me show you where you got some separation. Still. Is Christ in me the anointed one? Oh, it's the spirit of, it's the Christ in me. No, the Christ in you is you and him one. Didn't he just pray that? That we would become aware of our oneness with him? I know that's a challenge. It was a challenge to me when I began to see that. I am an anointed one. As spirit, I am an anointed one. And it's Christ in me, the anointed one within me. What is the anointed one in me? Spirit. Well, what does that mean? It means I'm in union with Father God. I'm in union with Jesus Christ. Is I'm one with them. My spirit is their spirit. You can't separate us. Take a glass of tea, you can put sugar, lemon, whatever you put in there. Once you put it together, you're not separating it. See, this goes into us understanding our oneness. I am an anointed one. Somebody was talking the other day. We were talking about this young lady that I know her gifting is a praise and worship leader. And this person goes, yes, she is really anointed. She, and I didn't say anything to them because I know where their thinking's at. She is really anointed. No, that's her gifting. And her gifting allows the anointed one that she really is in spirit to come forth and touch the hearts and the lives of people. Because when I hear her lead praise and worship, I hear one who is gifted, but also one who flows out of her understanding of who she is with Father and who Father is to her. You are... And your spirit is the anointed one within you. I'm going to say it again. Spirit, Holy Spirit, we call him, is the anointed one within you. And he's holy because God's all in that spirit. Jesus, the, the Christ man, is in that spirit. And you, spirit, are right there. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is the anointed one that you are within than this natural one that lives in this present order. See, God's been, I, I've been talking to God about miracles and the performing of miracles. You know, I'll just be honest with you. I've told God, I've asked him, God, show me how to work miracles. And I'll tell you why. I see somebody I love. I want a miracle for them. I'm moved by where they're at. I'm moved by this struggle that they're in. But I've told God, whatever way you want to bring it about, bring it about, Lord. Bring that miracle about. If it's just where he's at in his understanding here, bring it about. If it's where I'm moving into, out of understanding that I am spirit and I have the ability to do just exactly just as he was and he is, so am I. See, the reason we don't see the works that Jesus do, the greater works he said, but we would get, I'm just going to be honest with you, the reason we don't see those, we don't believe that that's who we are, that we have that same ability. But what we must understand, the same way Jesus did the works that he did, and how did he do them? What he heard the Father say and what he saw the Father do. He was only moved by spirit, by what Father was saying to him. 
what Father was doing. But see, Jesus' life was totally focused on living out of spirit. We don't live our lives like that. Most of the time we live our lives out of an identity of our physical self, what we're doing in the natural. Once in a while we'll move over here and we'll identify, okay, Holy Spirit, come. And we beg him to come when he's already there. But then our identity needs to flow in wherever I'm at. I'm spirit. I'm in union with God. I'm one with God. Okay, God. Jesus, well, okay, God, what do you got to say about this, God? God, show me what to do here. We need to learn first. We are spirit. Then we need to learn, Father, how do we live life in a natural world as spirit? Because Jesus came to open up our awareness of who we really are. But in creation, God brought heaven to earth. God brought spirit to earth in Adam. But Adam lost his awareness of the reality of who he was. And because he lost the reality of who he was, humanity since then lost the reality of who they are. But God is waking us up and bringing us to a remembrance of who we really are. And I'll just say this. Some of this stuff I'm teaching, science is proving it out. Science is proving it out. Science, especially quantum physics, is proving it out. You are light. And, it's, and they call it an energy field. That's spirit. That's spirit. You know? And that's the reality of who we are. And, and if you ever listen to anybody that talks about quantum physics or talks quantum, especially people. Um, I, I listen to some of them because I like to hear what they got to say. And I hear God. And God begins to tell me some stuff and show me, make some connections for me. They believe in God. They believe in Jesus. But they have an understanding of spirit that most Christians don't have. You are an energy source of God going somewhere to manifest. You need to, Angie, you need to see that. You are an energy source of God. You are so wrapped up in God. There's an energy that flows out of you that, that you are, that the reality of who you are. And I can just see you. You don't have to say a word to some people. Just put your hands on them. I think God will show you because you're only going to do what you hear the Father say do. You're only going to say what you hear the Father say. And when you say and you do, when you hear Father, that energy that you really are, which is spirit, that spirit that you are will manifest in their bodies and bring forth health and wholeness. I just see that. Start living your life as spirit. God, show me who I really am. Man, this started on this journey years ago and when I heard, woke up in the middle of the night and I heard the spirit of God singing that song that was by the hook um, that was a CSI. When CSI was back, and this is back now, they brought it back in. But that song and they were singing, Who Are You? And I heard the Holy Spirit singing that to me. Since that day, I've been on a journey. And God is bringing me in this journey. And I have been discovering, I have been discovering who I really am. You're more than that flesh that you walk around in. You are God in flesh. Let me just say that. Because you're united with him in spirit. Just like Jesus, you can manifest the life of God by hearing him. See, this is where we're at in our identification, moving from being a natural person and doing natural things. Yeah, I do a lot of natural things to live in this natural earth, but I need to identify as spirit. The real me is spirit working through this flesh. The real me is spirit united in one with God working out of this flesh, manifesting God in the earth. That's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did. But you know the heart of your Father, and you move when Father says move. You do when Father says do. And get out of all of this religious activity. Get out of this religious activity in your mind that you've got to do this to get from God. You know, someone blessed me 
this week, and they said, you know, said, I realized one day, because most of you here have been through that teaching, you give to get, you give to get from God. This person told me, said, I realized one day, all that is is a business deal. If I'll give, God will give back to me. And the person said, now you can't outgive God. You cannot outgive God. And I agree with him. Cause, and, and we were talking, I said, because you're blessed to be a blessing. And they said, yep, that's right. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I can give because I'm blessed. And I don't give to get anymore, he said. Because he lived a part of his life giving to get because that's what he taught. And so he believed it. But he's come to a greater awareness of who he is in that I don't have to give to get from God. I'm already blessed. Same young man that I heard prophesied to him one day, and he had no, because he knew nothing about God and religious stuff. Got a prophecy that told him, you'll see the river run up the mountain. And a young man came to me, he says, what does that mean? I said, well, in the natural, rivers don't run up a mountain, they go down. I said, so the river's flowing. I said, to me, that speaks of something supernatural. And the supernatural, there's something happening in your life, and there's something happening. It's, it's the supernatural. And he'll tell you today, God's been in the blessing of him, his family, and his, in his business. That it's been a supernatural work. It's been God doing a work in him. He started out giving to get, but God moved him to the understanding, you already got, son, go on and give. But God had to bring him to that point where he could see the hand of... See, God knows how to work with you. He knows how to work with you if you're stuck here. But he still always wants to move you here. He was stuck here. I got to give to get. And he started on that principle, on that precept. But in his understanding, his awareness, he has moved to, moved to his understanding. God has taught him, you're blessed to be a blessing. And you can bless others, and you can give for others, and you can do for others because I have blessed you. And you see and you acknowledge that it's been me that has blessed you. And as I told a person this week, no matter where people are at on this paradigm shift that's taking place in the earth, and it's happening in the earth, there are people God is changing their thinking. And you might need to enlarge your realm of who you're listening to if you're not being challenged in your thinking. Because I'm telling you, if your understanding's not being changed, I know I got to quit. <laughs> you will... Um, God is changing. Same thing he had to do with the children of Israel. Wherever they were, he was there. But he moved them. And wherever these, these people are in their thinking, God's still there and God still shows up. God's here and God shows up. But this is about moving in our identity, which is a result of our understanding of the reality of who we are. I love every one of you. Go this week and live out of and be who God has already declared you to be. Discover is what I need here. Discover the reality of who you really are and just be it. Get rid of the religious dogma, the religious understanding, and just be who you hear Father God by Spirit tell you who you are. God bless you. I should say, go be a blessing because you're blessed.